Okay, so to wrap this series up, I just wanted to look at the alternative to just using Marmoset, and that's to use Photoshop to do this stuff. And what I've done is I've just made this quick mock-up of um, the sort of thing you could do. And it's just to sort of highlight some of the uh, different kind of workflows you can use. So I've tried to annotate this in a way that it's um, maybe a bit more useful to people looking at it. Um, but basically what we've got here is we've got a base. In fact, if we go from the ground up. So we've got a base, uh, which is kind of like the sort of thing you would have in Mom's app, uh, which is just a base color. And then I have created a vignette for it. Um, if I was to try and recreate the same kind of thing, um, I actually just started with a color I thought would maybe work. Um, but I didn't go for anything specific. So say I thought this would be a better color to use. I filled it. Um, you could add a bit of noise if you want, just to get it started. Normally with these things, I'll add a bit too much, more than I would like. And then I go to fade do this on any filter and then just pull it up to the point where I think it's starting to do something which this probably won't show up once this video is compressed but there's a little bit of noise on there um, and then I'll go to filter uh, lens correction and go to custom and go to vignette and this is a really quick way to basically create a vignette you can create the amount of vignette you want and then you can change kind of the fall off. So I'll go for something like that, hit OK, and then essentially I have a background, which I can then edit later on down the line as to get the to get the colours right. I can use curves or hue and saturation, but I can just go into the curves and um, check the brightness, but I can go through here and I should get it closer to the colour I actually want. So you don't have to kind of obsess over getting the colors right, things like that straight away. You can do that stuff later. Then on top of that, what I've got is I've got, and I actually added these much later on because I ended up you know, adding a, uh, my character on and based on the character, you then sort of work out what you want your background color to be. Um, but I wanted to add a little bit more kind of like background detail. I played with things like um, shots from the game, stuff like that, but none of it seemed to really work too well. So I ended up going for these for using sort of generic grunge maps. So this one you can barely see. Um, if I turn it right up, um, it's set to soft light. So this is what I brought in. It's just a reference image I did a search for grunge on um, on Google. I got this. Uh, Um, you could set it to multiply or if you want maybe or I put it on soft light for this one um, and then just pull the opacity of it down so that it just creates a little bit of visual noise a bit of interest I'll just put, push it up a little bit so you can actually see the effect of it um, I also then to complement that I added another one which is this one as well in fact we could so what we could do is we could uh, sharpen that up a little bit maybe and then set it to multiply you can see the effect it has and then put it down a bit too and it just creates a different type of effect so you end up with something that's like a, a slightly more interesting background so they're the two grunge maps I used. Um, I also created a border which is quite uh, simple um, just using the same color as I used for these solids which are on here. So to recreate that border all I'm doing is making a selection on its own 
to let's call it right click uh, stroke I'm going to use this hot pink color three pixels around the center of the, the edge Hit OK and there you go if you want to obviously hot pink is probably not what you want um, but if you want to things you can do which can help it along is something if you fade it a little bit it just blends in with the background a little bit better um, and also you can do things like uh, you could add a mask and then you could go in over the top with I mean you could start with just something like clouds uh, render clouds and that actually will because this is using this um, you can um, you can actually change the uh, it, it basically is just feathering out little bits of it filling it out um, and you could, or you could go back in with a pen tool and kind of some kind of grungy mask you know pull it out or put it back in set this to like 50% opacity just fill some of this stuff back in hit X to switch to white to black start to fade some of it out you can do all this kind of stuff so you can and it's lost it's doesn't um, it's non-destructive so uh, so you can do stuff like that so that's how I create the border I also added a Dota logo um, all I did was with the logo was basically just remove the, the white part you can see there's still some issues with it and there's a little bit of um, jazz around the outside but essentially um, I just uh, used what was there um, it has some effects on it if I switch the effects off you can see there's a little bit of a drop shadow um, so if you've never done that before let's make a copy of this and remove the effects clear layer style switch this off so essentially um, in the layer style I've just created a drop shadow there. and an outer glow um, so the drop shadow once it's switched on once you click on it you can basically set you know all sorts of stuff how where the opacity the angle distance spread size to give it some just let it self place but the, there's all sorts you can do there you can do outer glows you can do lay patterns over the top gradient overlays all sorts of stuff you can play with those to just give them some effect so if we go for if we start with our main shot basically what I've got is I've got my main shot which would be my dude from kind of from this three-quarter view of um, not how you would see him in game but how he he actually looks with a bit of attitude um, I had the title bounty hunter and then I've just got some dummy text in there to say to so kind of like brief um, synopsis of who he is or biography of who he is and then also have a shot which is kind of what he would look like in game so I've just put in game view and I've got some of uh, them from the front and from the back these are all screenshots taken from Marmoset and then I've got wireframes and then on top of that I've got a title so the title is basically made up of uh, some text so the text I'm using is this Constantia regular um, which was the closest thing I could find to the actual Dota text um, it has some uh, I've, I've essentially um, widened it out a bit uh, so that it, it kind of has a similar sort of separation and it also has if we zoom in close it also has um, a slight uh, it has it has a couple of effects on it so if we go down to here have a look 
it has a stroke on it so basically that was to help sort of make it pop out so it's really small um, but it basically just gives it like a, a stroke around the outside it has a drop shadow same as the other one does and it also has this gradient overlay and the gradient overlay is set up basically to um, mimic the same kind of thing that's going on uh, let me do it is to mimic what's going on with this Dota logo where you see that it's kind of like darker in the middle and lighter at the bottom and the top and um, it was to try and do the same thing so that's basically uh, if we look in the the gradient overlay I have um, this gradient working uh, in a reflected style that basically means if it's linear it goes from bottom to top if it's radial it goes from the inside out so you see it's darker there and it goes lighter and if it's reflected basically means in this setup I've got it's darker in the middle and it goes light to the edges which is the same as what's on the, the, the logo so that just sits over the top without it it looks like that with it it looks like that it's really subtle anyway that's just for that bit just to sort of make it look like those two things have some sort of relationship um, and then behind that I've just got a, uh, a basically a, a used a brush and I just basically went across and made, made a stroke to basically pop it off this background um, so fairly straightforward stuff the so back to this main shot so we've got if I open this up we've basically got some text using the same font and it's got a drop just got a drop shadow on it it's actually probably a bit too over the top um, probably needs to get closer to that um, and this is just some dummy text um, and I have a couple of passes on the, the character and I also have a drop shadow and I have this solid that I created so if we look at it from the ground up uh, the first thing is the solid so to create something like this solid, it's very straightforward. Um, all I did was, uh, oh, what you can do is just create a new layer, got this color, and so this is the bit I want my solid to be, I create a mask from that, and then essentially what I've got is I've got this color, and I've got a mask which is um, hiding the rest of it. And then it's quite simple to go through and I'll just select a a brush um, and you've got I can use X to flip between black and white um, and paint into the mask and as I paint into the mask I'm cutting away some of it or I'm adding to it so all so all I did was I just worked at a low a lower opacity and I can set this so that it's you know it's affected by or um, pen pressure or I can just go in and I can use the, the number keys to go through 10%, 20%. So if I set this as 10%, then I can remove only 10% of it and try and keep it fairly straight. But also when I hit X, it means that I can add 10% back in um, if I want to. Or, and, then, and then I just go up and just try and create something which is uh, not it's relatively square but isn't totally square um, and it just creates an interesting solid and I keep using the term solid like everyone knows what that means basically a solid is um, a is it's basically something like this like a square or something that you sit behind the object to help pull it off the screen or into your view thing to watch for with solids, so you can have something like that. Um, the thing to watch for with solids is that they are uh, that you don't get um, tangents taking place. Um, so I can show you an example of that. Right. So I think we've got the hang of this. Let's get rid of that. Um, so if I bring my main guy in, um, this solid works because it helps pull him from the page. Um, but where it doesn't really work. Um, I'm totally breaking this. 
the sky sky is like if your guy is totally inside that um, and it's like right to the edges just stretch him a bit make the point like that doesn't really work as a solid because essentially you're you're getting these issues with tangents where the edge the silhouette is meeting uh, the edge of the uh, the thing so don't apply um, whereas this does work because essentially he is sitting it's your eye works out that he is stood in front of this because this is behind him but no part of it is basically uh, running up to the edge um, so that's and, and then the great thing about that is then when you drop text in here it totally makes sense that it's like it's to do with him so um, that's um, kind of how solids work okay so the next part of the puzzle is how we get a character onto here so we're going to need to use Marmoset to do that so I've got my character here and I've just created new camera camera one so this camera is fairly vanilla it's got no depth of field or anything like that on it and I don't really want any of that stuff on um, because I want this to be a nice clean um, export with a nice transparent it, it, on a transparent layer so um, it'll look it'll just drop straight in the only thing I'm going to change is I'm just going to push the sharpening level up a bit so it's a bit sharper looking beyond that I'm going to keep everything else the same so I'm just going to go to capture settings make sh set him as a larger size um, for that I'm going to set that 25 times it's PNG and I'm going to make sure transparency is on hit OK I'm going to go to I'm going to do image to clipboard because that will just give you this and it won't take into consideration the transparency so you'll get the background as well so you actually do have to save it as an image then when I go to Photoshop, what I have to do is I have to open and it'll drop it onto your desktop, the latest version, which is that one. And as you can see, here's what I've got. So I can take this and I can drop it into here and he's a lot bigger than what I've got set up. So I'm just going to scale him down. fits so that's him laid in and obviously you can do all sorts of stuff like if you want to go into blending options you could you know have him get have, have him with an outline around him if you wanted so that's it outside you know, like he's borderlands or something uh, you could have a uh, let's have a look outer glow maybe so that he sets off the page like that or you could do a drop shadow where basically like the text you've got which works quite well sits off the page a bit so we'll go with something like that and then we're going to put some text in so this is the text we've got we'll just pull this out of the way you can see what we're doing here it's fairly straightforward the text bounty onto using this same font To 
a bit more manageable. Drop it in on top. And then you can start to lay your text in. I'm just using some nonsense words, sample text. I'm just making it fit around the character. Uh, the other things you can do with this is again you can add um, you could actually take the what you've got on the character you could uh, copy the layer style that's attached to here so this drop shadow and you could paste the layer style onto that so it would be the same as character and you could go back in and maybe change the distance on it a bit so it's not quite the same but, and the other thing I would maybe look at doing is just dropping the opacity down slightly just so it blends in a lot, feels like it blends in a little bit better that looks okay so that's kind of like a decent starting point the only other thing that I put on there was a bit of a drop shadow by his feet and that's fairly easy to make if we just create a new layer and I'm just going to go to gradient tool make sure it's set to black and I've got this which is a black going through to nothing Cancel. and I've got it set up as a radial one as opposed to like a linear transition so all I did was made a just dragged it out a little bit to create like a little dot that hit control T to transform it um, to a free transform okay. distort them basically try to make it so that it would fit Save it down. That's all. And that's more or less that, I think, for that one. So the other ones I've got are the wireframes which we'll come to and the in-game shots. So the in-game shots are basically done the same way but all I've done is gone back into uh, this and set up the cameras so that it's kind of facing the way it would do in the game. Made a copy of that, turned it the other way, made a copy of that. Um, the solid on the background is just a copy of this one. Taken, dragged it down, made a copy of it, and just scaled it to fit, turned it around or whatever. So it's easy enough to do. Delete that. And then these are the same as this. So that's more or less the same. So I don't need to go over that again, otherwise we'll be here forever. Um, okay, so the main one is, you know, the other one is this wireframe. So essentially this is set up more or less the same way. The main difference being that these have got wireframes on them. They're more or less orthographic as much as you can do with Marmoset and I decided for the backgrounds of these because these were straight on 
that I would put a glow around them to make them stick out but beyond that they're more or less the same so if we just go to uh, the wireframes one um, they're more or less both without a glow on bit of text and a solid which is the same as the other solids so the it's probably worth going over how we do these in Marmoset. <laughs> 